Hi, this is Joel Crumpton uh, coming to you on this on video and uh, I wanted to uh, be able to minister to those of you who have been maybe you've been recommended to watch this video because you need healing in your body or maybe uh, you know somebody who needs healing in their body and you just wanted to watch the video first to see if it's something that would benefit them but I can assure you uh, there's going to be a lot of you that watch this video who need healing in your body and while you're watching the video, you're going to receive your healing. It's just that simple. I've seen uh, many people healed. I mean, I've lost count of how many people I've seen healed of just about anything you can imagine. Cancer, deafness, blind eyes open, even the color come back in their eyes while, while you're looking at them. Um, one guy was blind for four years. He'd been in a chemical explosion in a closed trailer. Ammonium chloride blew up right in his face and he had, they had sewed his eyes shut for 10 months. He couldn't go outside without dark sunglasses on because his eyes were extremely sensitive to light. And he was basically just a blind man. He could see just a little bit, but not enough to really be considered uh, uh, someone who could see. But he, I mean, he wasn't like completely, you know, dark blind where, he, where it was just, everything was dark. But he was, he couldn't see anything. But I remember when I first met the guy, I didn't even know he was blind. I just thought he was wearing sunglasses in the middle of the night. So I, I felt like the, the Lord wanted me to pray for him. And when, I, when uh, I asked him to take his glasses off, his sunglasses off, just out of reverence to God, he took them off and his eyes were like, he was squinting his eyes real tightly. I said, what's wrong with your eyes? And he told me what had happened. This guy got healed. The color came back in his eyes right in front of us. I mean, it was a miracle. Awesome miracle. Well, listen, friend, I've got awesome good news for you. Number one, you're going to receive your healing tonight. You know why? Because it's God's will for you to be healed. Well, how do you know that, Brother Joel, you might say? I know that because Jesus came to do the will of the Father who sent him. And all through the Gospels, you see where multitudes followed him, and he healed all their sick over and over. He healed them all. Why did he heal them all? Because it was the will of the Father to heal them all. Now, there's one place where it, it mentions, and some people have doubted whether or not everybody he laid hands on got healed, because they read that when he went to Nazareth, where he was brought up, they, uh, he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid, laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And I used to read that, and I was actually taught that there, because there was so much unbelief in Nazareth, that Jesus laid hands on a bunch of people and only a few got healed. But that's not what the scripture says. I started looking at it later on when I got a revelation about healing and I discovered that Jesus only laid, it, does, it doesn't say he laid his hands on many and a few got healed. It says he laid his hands on a few and healed them. So that means everyone he did lay hands on, everyone who had come to him for healing in the gospels, they all got healed. The only people who didn't get healed were the ones who wouldn't come to him because of unbelief. Now you're watching this video and I really believe that the reason you're watching this video is because you want to be healed. And the fact that you want to be healed is the reason you're going to be healed. One of the reasons and the fact that you're watching this video. In fact, it says this in the Bible. It says, Are any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over, over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. That word save is the, the Greek word sozo. And it, it covers everything. Healing, deliverance, salvation from sin, salvation from bondage, salvation from eternal punishment. It's a big word. It's only four letters, but it's, it, covers, it covers a lot of territory. It, it includes healing. Because it doesn't say, are any in sin among you. It says, are any sick among you. Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith shall save the sick or heal the sick in your situation. And the Lord will raise them up. And if they've committed sins, they'll be forgiven. That's good news, isn't it? Now listen to this part. This is important. It says in the next verse, Confess your faults one to another and 
pray for one pray one for another that you may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much now I remember reading that and I uh, I understand God has shown me something about this and it's very important when I first got a revelation about healing a number of years ago about 15 years ago the first thing I, I noticed was that everybody I prayed for got healed if they weren't a Christian I mean pretty much everybody there might have been very few ex exceptions to that rule but when it came to Christians it was exactly the opposite almost everybody didn't receive healing in the church and it was the exception when they did get healed. Not that really bothered me. And what the Lord showed me was this. The reason for it, number one, was that to whom much is given, much is required. For a sinner to be healed, the only thing that they need to do, the only faith they need, is enough faith to allow you to put your hand on them or touch them. And you don't have to put your hand on the sickness. You could, put your, you could just take them by the hand. And I was seeing them get healed left and right. I mean, week after week after week, out in public, at Walmart and wherever. But then when I went to church and people needed healing, I'd pray for them, and they were starting to doubt my testimonies because most of them didn't get healed. And that bothered me so much because I thought, Lord, what is going on here? And when he showed me, first of all, that to whom much is given, much is required, that really didn't satisfy me because even though I knew it was true, and it is, what is the much that is required? Is it much faith? Well, yeah. But what is it? What is the hindrance to our faith? That was what I needed to know. What is the thing that's preventing us in the church from having the faith to be healed? What is it that's blocking our faith or causing unbelief in our heart? Well, here's the first thing I noticed. In 1 John, it says this. And you can look these verses up later because I want to get to the healing part, and I know you do. In 1 John, it says, Beloved, if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, then we have confidence toward God and whatever we ask, we receive of Him. Because we keep His commandments and we do the things that are pleasing in His sight. The next verse says, and this is His commandment, that we believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. There's the key. You see, in the church, there's a lot of division. There's a lot of bitterness. There's a lot of envy. There's a lot of strife. There's a lot of unforgiveness, resentment. Now let me ask your conscience a question, friend. You need healing, right? Is there any unforgiveness in your heart toward anyone? Is there any bitterness? Somebody wronged you. Maybe they really did you wrong. Have you got bitterness or resentment toward them? If you do, you're going to have to let it go before you can get healed. Why? Because it's wrong for you to hold that as a believer toward anybody. Especially if it's a member of your family, if it's a member of your church, and it don't even matter if it's a sinner that's done you wrong. You've got to let it go. Why? Because Jesus said, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. He said, if you only love those that love you, how are you different than sinners? They do that. And if you're only going to greet people that are close to you, or people that you agree with, or that agree with you, why, even the worst of sinners do that. And then he said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. What does it mean to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect? Well, the Father loves his enemies, doesn't he? He blesses those who curse him. He is good to those who hate him. And Jesus, when he was hanging on the cross, God manifested in the flesh, prayed for those who nailed him to the cross. He prayed for those who spitefully used him and persecuted him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So as a believer, as a follower of Jesus, you're going to have to do the same thing. You see, the church at Corinth in the Bible was full of sick people. Had many were weak and sickly among them, and many had died from sickness and disease. And Paul told them it's because you've got divisions in your congregation. Some of them were saying, well, I'm of Paul. And others said, well, I'm of Apollos. And others, I'm of Cephas. And, and, and some of them said, well, I'm of Christ. And Paul says, is Christ divided? 
Well, of course not. And here they come together for communion, but they're not together. They're divided. So that when you're partaking of something that represents the coming together of the body as one unit, and yet there's a lot of division in this body, well, you're partaking of that communion unworthily, and you're eating and drinking judgment to yourself, not discerning the Lord's body. Well, his body is not just that physical uh, body of his that's seated at the right hand of the Father. The Lord's body is not just that piece of bread in your hand when you take communion. The body is other believers in Christ, whether you agree with them or not. And if you're not discerning that, then you're partaking in it with a divided heart. Your heart's going to condemn you. You're not going to have. You're not going to be able to have confidence toward God because because of that heart condemnation that you feel in your heart. And you're not going to receive what you need. You're not going to receive your healing. So here's what we're going to do. First things first. You need to let it go. If somebody wrongs you, and I'm not accusing you. But some of you watching this may not have any issues like that. But I would. I would venture to say that a lot of you do. Maybe you do. Examine yourself, the Bible says. Examine yourself. Let a man examine himself. And then let him partake. You see, I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. And the Bible says that the prayer of faith is going to heal you. But then it says, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So, you may need to confess your fault to somebody. It doesn't have to be to that person that you've done it to or that you feel it toward because that would just stir up more of a dust storm. But you need to confess it to somebody. You need to do it right now. If, you, if your husband's with you, if your wife's with you, if your ma, mom or your dad or your brother, your, somebody probably in the house with you, or maybe somebody is within your reach that you can get in touch with. If you know how to get in touch with me on Facebook, Joel and Pat Crumpton, is the way I'm listed on Facebook. Send me a message on Facebook and confess your fault. You don't have to go into detail. Just let me know that you've got unforgiveness and that you're letting it go. And then you can, I'll pray for you over, the, over text. I've seen people heal over text message. I didn't see them heal, but they got back in touch with me immediately and said, it's, it's gone. The, the pain is gone. I'm completely healed. You see, friend, especially, listen to me. This is important, especially if you've got something that could kill you, like cancer. You're going to have to let. You're going to have to really examine your heart and see if there's anything you need to let go of. You might say, "But, but listen, brother Joel, you don't know what that person did to me." You're right. I don't. But you know what? It doesn't matter what they did to you. When it comes to you forgiving them. Because you've done some pretty bad things to Jesus in your lifetime now, haven't you? You want him to forgive you. Jesus said, when you stand praying, forgive. Listen, when you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone. Anything against anyone. So that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. Friends, you're just going to have to let it go if you want to be healed. And if you want to remain, if you want to retain the forgiveness that was already extended to you. Yeah, you can lose your forgiveness if you refuse to forgive. You gotta, Jesus told the parable about it. A, a man came to, uh, to his master and said, and the master said, pay me what you owe. And he said, be, you know, be patient with me and I'll pay you all. But he, there's no way he could pay it. So the master had compassion on him and forgave him the entire debt. What did he do? He goes out to a fellow servant. He says, pay me what you owe. And his fellow servant said the same thing. Be, you know, be patient with me and I'll pay you. And he said, no, I'm not going to be patient with you. So he throws him in jail. His fellow servants heard about it. They went and told the master. The master called him on the carpet and said, didn't I forgive you? Why couldn't you forgive him? Therefore, because you wicked servant, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, revoke your forgiveness. I'm going to sell you, your family, and all that you have. And you're going to be turned over to the tormentors until you pay the full debt. And Jesus said, so shall my heavenly father do 
to each one of you if you do not from the heart forgive everyone of their trespasses against you. Pretty important, friend. You just kind of have to do it if you want to be healed and if you want to maintain your relationship with God. You're going to have to do this. If you'll do it, you'll be healed right now. Yes, you will. You'll be healed right now. Just let it go. Just say to God, Lord, I forgive. I forgive the person that did this to me. I'm letting it go. And when you do that, I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. Now, if you didn't, if if you didn't need to confess it to anybody because there's nothing in your heart toward anyone, you just want to be healed. I had to deal with that because I'm, there's a lot of people going to watch this. Some of you don't need to forgive or let anything go. Maybe you've got envy. Now, let me touch on that for a minute before I forget. Envy is when you're jealous because God used somebody else or God did something for somebody else, especially somebody that you don't think deserves it as much as you do. Listen to me. If you think God gave somebody something or did something for somebody else that you believe is far less worthy for him to do it for than you are, that's envy. And that's odious to God. Let me give you an example. I had a young lady one time. She and her husband had been married for a few years. They wanted to have children. She couldn't have children. She couldn't even be intimate with her husband. It was too painful. So uh, she wanted me to come over and pray for them. Or they did. They wanted me to come over and pray for her, that is, that she would be healed and that they could have children. So I said, okay. So I go over to the house. She came into the room. I asked her if she had any bitterness, resentment, or unforgiveness. She goes, no. And I said, what about envy? And she goes, well, when you said envy, immediately I felt in my heart, in my spirit, that the Lord showed me I've got envy towards somebody, but I don't know who it is. I said, well, God will show you. I said, when he shows you, are you willing to let it go? And she said, yeah. I said, well, God will go ahead and forgive you of your envy on credit, but you better make sure when he shows you that you deal with it. And don't and let it go, because you're gonna be tempted. Oh no, I can't let that go. No, you gotta let it go, or you'll lose your healing, and or worse. She said, "I'll let it go." So, I prayed for her. I said, "You're healed. Now you're gonna have children." It's that simple. Well, a few days later, the Lord showed her who it was, and she goes, "Her? I have envy toward her. I don't know why I would envy this girl because my goodness." This girl backslid. She got away from God. She ended up sleeping around with a bunch of guys, got pregnant out of wedlock, had a child out of wedlock. Why would I envy her? And so she said, well, the Lord showed me that I have envy toward her. I guess I'll send her a little email and ask her to forgive me for having envy toward her. So she said, while I'm typing the email up, the Lord just reminded me of how I said to him, now, Lord, I don't understand why she can have children. And she's backslid. She's not even living for you. I live for you all the time. I've never backslidden on you like that. And you won't let me have children. I don't understand that, Lord. Well, that's envy. The Lord showed her. That's envy. And you've got to let that go. She immediately was convicted, changed her email, asked the girl to forgive her, and they got a beautiful little boy now. Yeah, she got pregnant. They had a beautiful little boy. And they just had a little girl, so this is serious. Yep, you got to deal with it, friend. So if you need to deal with it, go ahead and deal with it now. Go ahead and just ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask the Lord to forgive them, the person that wrongs you, or the person you have envy toward. Just say, I'm letting it go right now. Just do it right now. I'm letting it go. Forgive me, Lord Jesus, for holding this toward them. Forgive them for what they've done to me. Now listen to me. You're forgiven. If you did that, I can tell you with, with authority, your sin's forgiven also. The sin of envy, the sin of unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, whatever it was. Let me have a drink of water. Now, are you ready to be healed? Because right now you're going to be healed. Now, I would encourage you, if you want to put this video on pause for just a moment, Go get you some oil if you've got some oil. Go get you some uh, olive oil or any, it don't matter what kind of oil. 
But the Bible says to, to anoint the sick, that are, those who are sick among us, with oil in the name of the Lord. So go ahead and put this on pause. Get your oil. Anoint your head with oil and say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as you do it. Then uh, take it off pause and I'm going to pray the prayer of faith and you're going to be healed right now. Completely healed right now. You ready? Go do that. I'll put the, uh, you put it on pause. I'll be right back. Okay, are you ready? All right, I'm, I'm trusting that you've anointed your head with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now just stretch your hand out and touch your screen there. You put your hand on top of the screen. If touching it, it's going to change something. Just touch your screen or touch the top of your computer there if you're watching it on the computer. Touch your, just hold your phone in your hand if you're, if you're on your phone watching this YouTube video. Now I'm going to pray the prayer of faith. The power of God is going to go into you. All the pain, all the infirmity is going to leave you right now. If it's cancer, it's going to be destroyed right now. You probably feel a little heat, a little warmth, a little tingling going through your body. That's normal. If you don't feel the tingling or the heat or the warmth, don't worry about it. We don't want by feelings. We want by faith. So you ready? Okay. Put your hand out there. Here we go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I pray the prayer of faith for my brother, my sister, whoever's watching this video right now that needs healing. And I thank you, Father, that your word says that the prayer of faith will heal the sick and that you will raise them up. I thank you, Father, that you said that if they've committed sins, the sins will be forgiven them. So right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release your healing power to this person. And I thank you, Father, that your healing power is going into their body now. And it's destroying the works of the devil. It's healing them now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your healing power that's going into them. There it is right there, friend. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my, my brother. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my sister in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Now I command all infirmity to go. I command cancer to disappear now. I command pain to stop and leave your body now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed. Be made whole now. Thank you, Lord. There's, there's God's healing power going through you. You may feel some tingling. You may feel some warmth going through your body. Praise the Lord. That's the power of God healing you right there. You might say, I don't feel anything. Well, just receive your healing. You're being healed anyway. Feelings or no feelings. We don't want by feelings. We want by faith. So just receive your healing right now, friend. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now begin to move. Begin to do what you weren't able to do. If you weren't able to move in a certain way without pain, I want you to just, if you couldn't bend over, bend over. If you couldn't raise your arm, raise your arm. If you couldn't turn your head, turn your head. Do whatever it was you couldn't do or whatever it was you couldn't do without pain. Do, do something that would normally hurt. If it's squatting down, squat down. If it's whatever it is, check yourself. Do something you weren't able to do. Now maybe there was nothing that you could do to make it hurt, but you just need to go to the doctor and get yourself checked. That's fine too. We had a woman that came to one of our meetings in, uh, at the border of Mexico. One of the first times I taught on this. And I had the people forgive everybody who had wronged them. She was one of the ones that came to the altar to forgive, to confess that she had wrong, that somebody had wronged her. And uh, she'd left the church a number of years before because of uh, an offense. Somebody offended her. Somebody did, did her wrong. She had started coming back about six weeks before this. And uh, she had cancer of the blood. She was given a death sentence. So that night she forgave whoever it was that wronged her. She let it go. That same night that she let that go, I laid hands on her and prayed for her the prayer of faith. The power of God went into her. She didn't feel anything but except she felt better. She said, I feel better. So I said, go to the doctor. I said it through the interpreter. Go to your doctor tomorrow and get checked and you'll notice that your, the cancer is gone. Sure enough, she went to the doctor the next day. The pastor, the, actually the, the pastor of the church called the missionary who had invited me there while we were installing a a roof or a, a, a drop ceiling inside the church sanctuary and the woman called, the pastor called the missionary and the missionary started rejoicing. I said, what is it? He said, that woman that you prayed for that had cancer of the blood, she went to the doctor today. The doctor told her that she is cancer free. Now listen to me. Isn't that awesome? Listen to me. What God did for her, he just did for you. 
you just got healed. I want you to send me a note. I want you to comment on, in the comment section below this video, right down at the bottom down there, and let me know what happened to you. Let me know that you about your healing. Give me your testimony. God bless you, friend. In Jesus' name.